The two o'clock in the morning, violent home invasion in progress. It's every homeowner's nightmare scenario. Three armed hostiles, all with handguns, trying to bang down your door. Do you have a plan to deal with a threat like this? Hey guys, Aaron Dor here with the American Firearms Association. This may be the most terrifying video we have broken down for you yet on this channel. This video was sent to us by an AFA member in Seattle, Washington. This took place in nearby Auburn, Washington, just in the last two weeks. This is a, from police reports, this is a known home invasion crew that is attacking Asian homes in the greater uh, Seattle area and suburbs around Seattle is a highly violent crew, as you're about to see, and they have not been caught as of the most recent reports that we have read. This homeowner, they thought, was going to be easy prey, and instead he turned the tables on these guys with well-aimed gunfire and saved his family. So we love showing these because we can never forget what's going to happen to our country if we lose our right to keep and bear arms. Our guns are great for stopping tyranny. They're also great for stopping criminals. And if we ever lose them, we won't be able to stop either. It's also important for us to watch these, though, to better mentally prepare in case something like this, God forbid, ever happens to us. That's why we play these videos. So we're going to play it through one time at full speed. It's about 25 seconds. Then we're going to break it down. There's a lot to unpack in this video. So we'll play it slower and we'll kind of do it frame by frame. Don't forget, guys, subscribe for more content like this. And also don't forget, at AFA, we fight for your gun rights in Congress and in state capitals. We're not lawyers, and I'm not giving you legal advice. I'm giving you my take on what I think this guy did right, what he did wrong, which in this case was nothing, and how we could all better prepare. Leave your comments in the comment section. What do you think about what this guy did and about our take on it? All right, let's hit play this time at full speed. These guys don't hesitate. Seattle police. He says Seattle police. That's it. The video cuts right there. 26 seconds is the full length. And guys, this is a really, really, really hot situation because it is not some novice uh, robber who wants to come into your home when it's unoccupied to steal your TV. This is the ultimate middle of the night, multiple armed ass assailants scenario. And this guy, we think, did an excellent job. I'm going to slow the speed down and we're going to go back through here now at a slower pace to break down what we can learn from this video. Before I do that, though, I just want to say for this homeowner, he gets a major shout out from us. This guy stood his ground against one of the most dangerous threats that we have seen and came through with flying colors and saved his family. Major shout out from all of us here at AFA to you, sir. Well done. So at half speed, you see three attackers approach the door very quickly. And what have you already seen? Well, you already saw the security light come on and you've already seen a security camera in place. So he gets a huge shout out from us for both of those points as well. By having that camera and by having that light, he knows immediately once he wakes up and can check his phone or check his TV, he knows what's happening at his front door. He doesn't have to hesitate. He doesn't have to guess or wake up or rub his eyes. He knows right away, I've got multiple guys trying to break their way into my front door. And he gets big, a, a big shout out for that because it's always important to have that. But what happened in this case that made it even more important? You heard it. These thugs yelled out Seattle police. They're not stupid. They're not stupid. And they know that for a good guy or for a good gal, saying police is going to make you hesitate. It would make me hesitate. Naturally, it would. And so the only way he could be certain that it wasn't the police was by having a camera and lights in place to make that positive identification. And he did that in this situation. Well done to him. To play a bit more. What else do you see? Again, not some novice crew. They all have face masks on. Two of them are wearing gloves, the guy in the front and the guy in the back, white gloves and blue gloves. As you're about to see here, they all are armed. I'm going to pause it here in about two seconds. Give me just a moment here. 
You can see right here. Here we have a gun on the left, the guy, the black uh, ho um, uh, hoodie. We have a gun in the middle, the guy in the gray hoodie. And on the right, we have a gun in his hand as well. All three guys are armed. All three guys are wearing face masks. All And two of the three guys are wearing gloves. They came not to steal a TV. They came to take someone's life. This would have been a lethal encounter had they made their way inside of that home. Let's hit play a bit more. The third guy is making his attempt now on the door. And I'm going to mention the door as well. This guy gets high points as well for having more than your average front door. This door sustained nine separate kicks or body slams before it gave way. Now, we'd like to see more. Sure, we, we all would. But at the same time, a lot of doors wouldn't survive two or three kicks. And so by having a stronger door and a stronger reinforced door frame, this guy bought himself the time he had to have to get a weapon in his hands and prepare to defend his family. So uh, well done on that as well. Let's hit play. And right here, the door is going to blow open. We can't quite see it on screen, but you can tell because the bullets begin to fly on these guys. They immediately duck and retreat and run away. If you watch really closely here, it might be kind of hard to see. It's a kind of a grainy video, but the guy in brown pants, as he gets off the steps and rounds the corner, he fires back at the homeowner. It's hard to see here, but he does fire back on these guys. And that is the end of the of this video. And so a lot of shots were fired in this engagement. You heard that in the audio. We're not sure exactly how many were fired by both sides. It seems as though both parties had 9 millimeter. Uh, that's based on the casings that we saw on news reports that covered this event. So not sure anybody had anything other than a handgun. So a lot of noise, a lot of shots being fired. We could not get an accurate count on how many rounds were fired, but it was not uh, a, a mild engagement. So we already mentioned the lights, the door. Also, our third big shout out to this guy for having the mental mindset necessary to deal with a threat like this. This is a terrifying encounter. I don't care who you are. Three and three guys, middle of the night, all armed. This is not an easy a situation. You can quarterback it easily in the comfort of our living rooms, but to go through this in real life and do so well as this guy did, major shout out for mental preparation as well. He obviously had done some. So let's discuss the legalities here. Legalities. Is was this shooting justified? But well, we say absolutely, hands down, it was in any state in the country. Again, we're not lawyers, but every state, even blue states, even blue states allow people to take defensive actions to prevent and depends on your state, but to prevent a forcible felony, to prevent a dangerous felony, to prevent a violent felony, depends on your state's uh, laws. But every state has some provision to prevent a middle of the night armed home invasion, especially if it's caught on camera, as this one was, this guy will be fine from a use of force standpoint. If you agree or disagree with that, let us know in the comment section. But now I'm going to push it a little further. What are your thoughts on if this homeowner did not wait until the door broke open to fire around? What if he shot through the door? Is that justified in your mind? And I'm going to push it even further. What if he did not have the security camera in place to positively identify the threat? What do you, what do you think about that? Let's break this down. I mean, obviously, shooting through a door is dangerous. You don't, you don't know definitively what's beyond the door. You don't know who's back there, and you don't want to shoot what you can't see. That's a given statement. But that's not the end of the conversation, because in this situation, especially having a security camera, he could have some knowledge of what was back there behind the door. And also, he also knew that with three armed assailants, if they made entry and he waited till they made entry into the home, he could be dead. He could be dead. He survived this encounter, thank God, but it could have gone the opposite direction. Most states, this is state by state specific, I want to make that very clear, most states allow you to take defensive action to stop those violent crimes that I laid out a minute ago before they take place. You're not required to be partially before shooting your rest. You're not required to be partially murdered before shooting your murderer. Most states allow you to use defensive force to stop the imminent threat of these, uh, these, these, uh, these, these crimes as well. 
there is certainly a case to be made here for this guy to use defensive force before that door was kicked in. This is a little more, this is a little bit less clear, perhaps, than once the door got blown open. Give us your thoughts on that in the comment section as well. And a big shout out to him legally for having the presence of mind to not chase these guys outside of his home. Number one, tactically very dangerous. You lose the, the, the depth the home provides. You have to cross out the fatal funnel to get outside. And once you're outside, your eyes are accustomed to your interior. These guys are accustomed to the dark. They could be waiting to ambush you right outside your front door, and you would not know it until it's too late. Too many times we've seen videos where the good guy chases the threat off of his property that is dangerous uh, physically. It's also dangerous legally. I mentioned this is a justifiable use of force in basically every state in the country. That is That changes, though, once you leave the home. Once you leave the home, you adopt a different level of legal liability. That's, again, another reason why he should not uh, have left, why he did not leave the house and why he gets high marks from us for not doing that. Again, leave your thoughts in the comments section on chasing somebody off of your property. And finally, a political overview. We could not get an exact round count, but... It sure seems like the good guy fired more than 10 rounds. Imagine if he was in a blue state that had a 10-round magazine limit. Imagine if he had a revolver or a, a Glock 9 with 10 rounds. Could have easily died. Could have easily died. You have three guys here with guns. They could have had 10 rounds in there, 15 rounds in there, 17 rounds, even more rounds in there. So they could have had over 60 rounds of ammo. And your politicians, if you're in a blue state, They expect you to defend your family with 10 rounds. What a joke. AFA will always fight against mag limits. Guys, be involved with that fight. Go to joinafa.org and join up today. The same thing, though, applies to these BS safe storage laws. Note my heavy sarcasm, safe storage laws. California has them. They had for decades. New York has had it for a couple of years now. More states are enacting these. And what they expect us to do in these safe storage Again, heavy sarcasm. The safe storage states is to leave your gun unloaded and secured in a gun safe or the cable lock 24 hours a day, every single day of the year, unless you're actively using that firearm for hunting or target shooting. So imagine if you're this guy, you hear that slam on the door, and we counted this. He had about 21 or, or 20 seconds between the first guy kicking the door. And when the door flew open. So imagine you've got 20 seconds from when you hear the slamming to wake up, find a light switch or a flashlight, go find your gun safe or go find the key for your cable lock, open up the gun safe. Then you got to find ammo because you can't leave the damn gun loaded. That's also a crime in many safe storage states. So find your gun, find the ammo, find your glasses or whatever you need to be able to see and to function do all of that with your wife and children screaming as your door is being broke down. Could you do that in 20 seconds? I couldn't. There's no way. There's no way. And that is the reality of safe storage laws. But make no mistake, it's not just blue states pushing this. We now have red states like Georgia, for example, discussing safe storage laws for their state. And finally, Political takeaways, the AR-15. Boy, if there was ever a situation to have an AR-15, this was custom made to order. Multiple targets. Wow, to have an AR-15 in his hands, which he did not have. 30 rounds in your uh, your gun, ready to go. A weapon light on that gun, ready to go. A great optic on that gun, ready to go. That is the tool you need to deal with multiple armed attackers like this. He didn't have that. Because don't forget, in Washington state, it's now a felony crime to have an AR-15 unless it's part of the pre-ban era of AR-15s. Never, ever allow your state to ban the AR-15 or similar firearms. It is not enough to have a handgun in your hands when facing multiple attackers like this. Again, guys, major props. This guy stood his ground, scared off three armed attackers, saved his family. Well done to him. That's our take on this. What do you guys think? What is your feedback? Give us your thoughts in the comment section. As always, join the fight today, guys. Go to joinafa.org and get involved.